o'clock, the meeting will be called to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the You and approval of the agenda. Any questions? Changes? Motion? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody here wish to make public comments on anything not on the agenda tonight? Any topic going once? Moving on. The consent agenda. Any questions? I do have one. Um, the line item for the La Harp v VFW boot block request, I just need to see if we can have that date changed. It should be May 24th of 2025. So noted. Anything else? Motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the amended consent agenda. Second. I'll second. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? New business. So I just want, sorry, just want to clarify. It's just on this sheet, updating it, right? Yeah, it's just the summary okay. page. Yeah. By Park Sports Philly Mammoth issue. You, rece you, yeah, that's me. you should have the Sorry. paper that you got when you walked in that's got the appropriate recommendation on it. Yeah, and Mayor, this, this would just be initiating phase two of the agreement that was signed uh, between the city and Mammoth uh, at its meeting on June 24th. The school district agreed to pay for half of it. This would be approving the, the other half, $15,000. And all the, the work you see is right there. Uh, and staff recommends approval of it, so we've told you that's, uh, that's a lot of information for $15,000. Uh, basically, the design and pre-construction services. Yeah. So if I so understood correctly, it looks at the flood mitigation more closely right. and, and the overall plan. Yeah, what, what, what we saw on June 24th was the bird's eye view. This is getting into down and dirty. And there's already going to need to be some changes just off the top of my head. One of the detention areas had one of our lift stations in it. So that detention area is going to have to be moved south ever so slightly. And, uh, Corey, there's one other one. You and I both cut. And I'm, may, uh, I know the ball field one. size changed, too, on the, on the schematic yeah. that we saw. The ball field was bigger. And I, I don't know if they, we talked about leaving it just because of the way the field layout was. But um, that, I, sent, I emailed that out because we omitted it in the first packet. I think I emailed it out right after I got the packet out, actually. So you should have had it like Wednesday afternoon, the, the three sheets that you have in front of you. And the, and the, and the finished product is something that, that can be used if something, if this project doesn't go through, that's that's information that we can use whenever. Yeah, the, the good news about it, I mean, for what we're getting out of it, we should have some plans that, and some drainage stuff that, even if the ball fields don't transpire, we've got some ways to maybe remediate some of the stuff internally in our with our staff. Yeah, that was my question. Yeah, we'd so, be able to use that. So I'm not meaning this in a negative way, but I'm going to pull a Carl. Um, Yay. Be <laughs> because this is at $15,000 and the threshold is $10,000 for it to come to the city, did it need to go out for bids at all? It's up to you guys. Yeah, and then the discussion we've had, you know, Mammoth was brought to us. Right. Yeah. The whole project needs to be in a bid situation. No. Discuss that at a previous meeting and pretty much. I remember going forward with phase one because there wasn't cost. But now that we're bringing in cost, that's, that's just my question that I have. We did discuss that at the last board meeting, though, council meeting, because council member Wells brought that up on fill in the waters, how everybody felt about splitting the cost with USD 257. I know it was not voted on because we had to wait and see what the district right. did. 
So on that note, <clears throat> the school did approve sharing half this cost. If this council wants to move forth, we need a vote to approve the second half of the cost. Can I ask a question? Are we 100% going with this salmon, or is it going to get? My understanding there's individual we can pick and choose what we accept from mammoth right if they give us a, a two million dollar bid and we see dugouts for three hundred and fifty thousand we could take that out and bid it elsewhere correct yeah well as, as also part of the services mammoth would, would do some bidding as well they, they would yeah. they would do bidding for us to outside circuits yeah when, when we get a bid for a pickup and when we're talking about spending three million dollars to me you need to get some comparisons but this is is this, the, is mammoth, this separate mammoth, from mammoth will act kind of like a general contractor well, maybe and they, they, and they, they even for they even the said i mean they I'm would saying. get bids from other companies they would use local resources as much as they could but by approving this, it does not we don't commit. Don't phase three yet. No. Right. right. It does not commit us to moving right. forward this with is mammoth. Just, this is just this the is design. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. would be the. The course. Yeah. This would be the next. The next step after this, assuming this one gets approved, would be if you actually do anything. Right. Because then we could jump ship, yeah. but we have the information to right. jump ship with. Right. And then the so. second half of this discussion is going <laughs> to go a long way towards that. Yes. Yeah. I got a question. I obviously wasn't here at the last meeting, but I read the notes, and there was discussion about including the turf on the football field. Is that something we've got out of the? Is it out of the scope now, or is it in, or what? That's, that's, the school no, that's okay. something the school would have to decide. They own the football stadium, but the the flood mitigation design that there's a benefit to the flood control by turfing the football field. Sure, and so, that, so what I'm so wondering is the information, if we approve this, are we going to get information that includes retention in the football field or correct. not? It's yeah. the whole yeah. package, Joel. Yeah, the whole Joel. package. It, Joel, yeah. And, yeah, and Joel and mainly it'd be the underbuild. Sure. What it would and do. I did send him some more information, Joel, because back in 06 when the school did, their, did the track, uh, I can't remember the company. I want to say it was HDB out of Topeka. Uh, that did the track surface. They actually have an underbuild system that wasn't reflected in any of the discussions we've had previously. So uh, Mammoth has got that information now. I don't know if it's something they can utilize or not, but it, there is some underbuild in that football field now. Okay. So that's what I was wondering. Thanks. And then a lot of this is going to depend on that grant that $10 million grant that we were hoping would encompass at least 75 to 80 percent of this cost? Yes. Yes. I'd like to approve phase two of the Riverside Park Improvement Plan with Mammoth in the amount of 15000 I'll second that. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Sidewalk request. Do we know why this sidewalk was not there to begin with? It doesn't look like there was ever a sidewalk there. Well, there was never a sidewalk there. Look at this again, Corey. It's so odd, though. It just the picture you gave us looks like there's a sidewalk there, but it's covered with grass and debris. Well, and there very well could be. I do know when we did our the Lincoln Street Road project, there wasn't a sidewalk there, there's or at least, yeah, and that was in 2003. I think that's just dead grass more people have walked on it, Steve. I don't think it's... It sure looks aligned with the rest of it. Yeah, uh, because that's actually I, got the new street alignment in it, in this aerial photo. So, no, I think it's just, yeah, honestly, a beat-down path of the grass. It's just beat-down path from people yeah. walking there. I, I do have some questions. Um, first of all, and I'm not trying to open up a can of worms, but I guess it will. Um, the sidewalk... Um, project that we have that is for it, it was the concept was to help property owners improve existing sidewalks correct yes and yeah. this is not an existing sidewalk correct well and we 
we, our program I know, we, we do allow them. Yeah, and, and you and I talked about that this afternoon, Corey. Right. Um, my other thing is, is this something that we could collaborate with Thrive and or USD 257? Um, I know that I think Thrive may have been the driving force for the sidewalk project on State Street going to Walmart. I, I don't that's, know. That's city. Was that 100% well, we city? That was city council okay. uh, approved that, and it was done in-house by the city. And then we also kind of visited a little bit today, Corey, about hopefully, fingers crossed, this potential $10 million grant through Thrive that they're going to assist us in writing could also include one of the one of the legs of that grant is going to be sidewalk replacement throughout town. So. Yes, it could potentially fix that situation if if we get awarded this grant. So can we table this? Or? As you can see, this was brought up in uh, August or so last year, I think. Yeah, is when I'll, I'll, I'll speak to this. So I'm the one stirring the pot on this. So I had met with <laughs> um, uh, the... Uh, Stacy Fager and you know we were talking about when we were building the elementary path right to the new elementary school from the high school to the elementary the city had done that and they said that's great but one thing that we would really want the school really wants is the sidewalk in that section either side of the road they don't care so I talked to the homeowners on either side so I talked to the homeowners on the east side and they were not interested on the west side they're like yeah but we can't afford that and that that path is used by a lot of kids going to school like and I drive Cottonwood every day like in the winter there's a lot of kids like you know having to walk in the street and it's just as it, it's a very recreational road like a lot of people run Cottonwood it's got some of the best sidewalks in town and a lot of town has really crummy sidewalks and so like just that one section is the only unpaved bit on the entire stretch of Cottonwood which is a major pathway for a lot of pedestrians you know both school and other in our, in our community I for my part, I, I remember when the city council did the sidewalk program. So I think Thrive had instigated it, but you know it made a lot of sense. It's healthy communities, people walking more, and, and having sidewalks is one of the things that allows people to walk, not drive places. And I remember at the time, you know, that the pharmacy, you know, we sold. Um, you know, wheelchairs and motorized access. And a lot of them said, Iola is a very frustrating place to live. Because if you, you know, you have to map out places in your head to go because, you know, you'll be going along and all of a sudden there's either no sidewalk or the sidewalk is, you know, just drops off a cliff to the road. And you, you have to backtrack, go out into the road and drive. And so the things that we can do to help improve that in the town, um, benefit everybody like so and I think that the way the program was designed it was designed to be fair right so the homeowner puts in something and the city will put in something and then everybody in the community gets this sidewalk that we all get to use and enjoy the kind of the issues that I have with the program as is is you know if if you're going to do the work yourself. You either have to be able to do the work and have some of the tools yourself, although a lot of concrete tools aren't that expensive, and you got to know how to do it, which is, I don't think it's that hard, but for a lot of people, I, I don't think they'd know how to build a sidewalk well. Or you have to have someone else do it, and it becomes prohibitively expensive for most people to do that, and then you run into the situation where we're not getting any sidewalks built. Like, we have all this money set aside that we never use because, you know, the way the program is designed doesn't really get what we want out of it, which is more sidewalks. And so I, I, this is one where it's glaringly obvious that every, you know, having a sidewalk would benefit a lot of people. Um, you know, there's a lot of support from Stacy Faker, the school superintendent, saying you know, that the school really wants to have a sidewalk there for the schools. And so if we can't make this happen, we either need to change the program so that it's, it, you know, we get more sidewalks built um, you know, and change the fairness of it in such a way that we get more out of this, this money we set aside and just end up not using most of. Um, or just you know, do this one and keep the program as it is and make an exception. Um, so those are, those are my thoughts on it. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm always really leery about making exceptions and setting precedents. Um, I agree with you, though, Nick, that there needs to be something done um, because when I walk, I walk from my house <laughs> clear up to Miller and back right up Cottonwood because of that exact reason. Um, I would like to see the interest in maybe tabling it and see how that grant, f how the chips fall with that. Because um, I know, Jessica, that you're going to work 
really hard to get that because I and I also know that during the last Thrive um, community meeting that was number one, one of the number one um, concerns and issues and request was to have better walkways for the community and um, I mean just my 10 cents not that it's worth even a dime or a, qu a penny but I would like to see how that grant falls and then maybe we can move forward with it what the timeline on that grant be? so um, come up please thank you <clears throat> so the grant it, we can submit it at any time uh, the narrative itself is done I'm just waiting on final figures for like the ballpark and everything and so I'm hoping to turn it in next week they're looking at them as uh, as they receive them and if we don't get accepted uh, they're actually giving feedback and allowing us to resubmit um, which is one of the reasons why we want to get it in as early as possible um, and so it, it just depends on how long it takes them once they receive that grant to actually look through it and either schedule um, the, the teleconference portion of it or send it back for us to revise and resubmit. So. So soon. So soon, yeah. <laughs> so we've had a suggestion to table, council, any other? <clears throat> My, my opinion of this is uh, I wish we had sidewalks on both sides of every street in this town. I mean, while it's a modern era, it would be nice to have. And, and uh, I don't think that this has cost us very much. So my, my feeling is we just go ahead and do it. It's a new sidewalk. It's not like we're fixing a sidewalk for somebody else, right? Um, and so I feel like that's a service that the city could, could afford. Uh, especially in this case and maybe we redo the policy a little bit or something but we sure haven't put in a whole bunch of sidewalks since we did the one on State Street so <clears throat> that's my opinion I'm gonna have to get new quotes because those are about a year old and I'm guessing they'll go up because concrete's probably a little more expensive than what it was in August of last year it also seems reasonable and, to table it if, and if it's getting turned in soon, too. It, the other thing and is, if the, school keep in mind, too, that in, in, have you opened a bank vault door if they say the city's going to pay for it? Well, now it's $10,000 where it should be six or seven. So you have to have a reasonable cap, and I think that's kind of why we have a cap on the program. Can you get current estimates and bring back to the council? Sure. Is this something that the city can do with the staff? Not right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're gearing, up for, we're gearing up for Chip Seal. I mean, city, maybe in the city fall. City bid did. Yeah, or city bid did. So it sounds like it would be best to table it because we have two directions. One, table it for the grant. One, table it for new bids. Is that a fair assessment? So somebody wants to... I can get you some. I can email it out to you guys as far as a. Uh, you want you want to tack on twenty five percent? Yeah, I mean, I can get just tack on if, if it's fifty four and change. Uh, I I would venture we'd be kissing seven thousand. Probably, some something like that. How much? Yeah. Ten thousand. Seventy five or so. Seven seventy five. Yeah. Yeah, frankly, Mayor, I I think tabling it's just a good idea. Let's just see what happens with the grant. Yeah. I, I mean, I we, that's we'll, good we'll find out in, in due time. That could give us two yeah. good directions to go. It's still addressing it, just which direction do we go. Okay. Good with that? All right. Roundtable, Ward 4 vacancy, introduction of candidates. <clears throat> this is, uh, I don't know if we want to have one or the other come up first and come up and Ben you're first in the packet if you want to come up first give us an introduction of yourself and your uh, little bit of your background tell us what you think we want to hear and your interest in council okay. position uh, my name is Benedict Middleton I've been a resident for 59 years my application I listened to your appeal uh, 
for uh, to fill the vacancy, and I felt it was my civic duty. Currently, I'm on the Planning Commission and the Board, uh, board of Zoning Appeal. I got that position. The same thing is there's an appeal to have. Uh, uh, they needed a seat filled as well. Been involved with other things, uh, coaching for the city, involved with uh, Sesqui some years ago, a year long, oh, yeah. year long event, <laughs> um, Mad Bomber Run with Thrive. And anyway, I have no agenda or anything like that, but would like to be part of the discussion. Uh, was, was retired from KDOT 32 years. Currently, I'm with Garver. And they team with Burns McDonald for the KDOT Ike program. Make sure it's on budget and on time. So, so you have an understanding of Burns and McDonald and that the yes, city utilizes them and yes. how valuable they are, a good resource for us. Ben, did you did you run once for council member when it was the eight first going to the eight person? No. I'm mistaken on that then. I was thinking you put your hat in at that time. Oh. I've been requested to do some things years ago. <laughs> yeah. Never, never did. Five Council, years. any questions for, do you prefer Ben or Benedict? Ben's fine. Ben is fine. Thank you. Council, questions? Nothing? All right. Thank you. <clears throat> and then Diana. <laughs> Hi, I know a lot of your faces. I've seen you around town. My name's Diana Dashna, and um, I just recently retired from um, Allen Community College. I ran the bookstore there for the last couple of years. And I've only lived, not 59 years, I just moved here, September will be four years. And when I first moved here, um, I got involved with the theater, the local community theater here, and there was a very unique play that they had done about a young lady that um, had been in prison, and she, while in prison, read these articles about this small town, and it touched me so much because she chose to go live in this very small town, and she loved it there, where people who have lived there forever and ever couldn't always see how wonderful their community was. And I just wanted you to know, we live here, we chose Iola, Kansas. We're from California, Northern California, born and raised. And um, anything that we can do in our community to help, and when I say we, it's my husband and I, and we belong right now or we all give a lot of time to different organizations. My recent one is ACARF. I now volunteer out there with the little kitties and stuff twice a week <laughs> and have a great time. I was asked to um, submit my application to be a part of the board. I work well with people. I feel like not only can I get people on board on my side, but I feel like I also bring out the best in people and let them shine and give me their ideas, and I'm very open-minded. Um, and I live within the district that I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Check the maps. <laughs> so <laughs> any questions? Anything I can? What were you involved with back in California? You know, I was a working fool in California. Um, most of my volunteer work had to do with the elderly, senior facilities, um, not theater, and not the animal control or anything like that, unfortunately. I raised um, um, five sons, and when we left California in 2020, we had, at that time, nine hair salons. My husband had been retired from the railroad for quite some time. And he does volunteer stuff or in California with equine horses, trail riding, cleaning trails, things like that. So no, not real experienced, as some may have be on this. But I'm trainable. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Council, the decision's up to you. I approached Roxanne to see if I was reading the um, governing body handbook correctly, and it says the governing body shall appoint. I believe it used to be the mayor would appoint, but it's now the governing body. So it's up to you guys if uh, one of our two candidates you'd like to choose from. I'd like to say that this is a you know, usually when we have these, there's only one person, which makes it so easy. <laughs> and now we have two people who would both be good at it. So this is like totally not fair uh, that we have to deal with this. 
I want to thank both of them for applying and for the volunteer work that you do already do within our community and um, and Diana, I am also from, born and raised in, in Southern California, um, but I've lived here for almost 31 years and raised my two children here. But um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull the Band-Aid. Just nominate somebody. I would like to nominate Ben Middleton to fulfill Ward 4 seat. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Hey, somebody's got to vote for the other person. <laughs> <laughs> so, Roxanne, it's a split vote. Does well, does someone want to no. nominate Diana? Now it goes to the mayor. Does split the vote? No, there, there is no vote on Diana yet. Oh, you're right. That's right. Yeah, I yeah, misspoke. I say. Yeah, it's. Jeez, thanks. So it is the mayor's choice. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot, but it's the mayor's choice. Rewrote the book. Um, Remember, Mayor, the, I, the motion is to approve Ben, so that. Yeah. So you don't and, need to give your preference, but you want, want to make sure your yeah. your words are correct and. And. Uh, yeah, motion is to approve Ben. Yes. So that would be my vote. But, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Would be Ben. I will. I will. Uh, I'll, I'll put my vote to Ben and Diana. I appreciate everything you're doing, and I want to encourage you to continue to serve, and keep us in mind when election time comes around if you're interested. But thank you for choosing our community too. Yes, thank you. Congratulations, Ben. Ben, do we want to swear in tonight, night. Night. and he takes the seat? I wasn't prepared to swear in. Might as well have him jump in and start the budget process. All of the rest of it, he just won't be able to vote on anything until you swear him in. I mean, he yeah. can come up here and sit and listen. All we got left is budget discussions, anyhow. So he gets to listen to the fun stuff, right? All right. Keep this packet for next meeting. Roxanne. Moving on. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I got. I'm confused. I, I've got this thing in my packet for this. That was not wall supposed to be in there. That's, that's not. That's. Ignore, yeah, that was supposed ignore. to be in our next meeting. The, the next light. Yes. Not, okay. Not yeah. tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Got you, Corey. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you said. That was the one piece that was supposed to be taken out, but wasn't you. taken out. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Roxanne, if I'm glad you're here for in something. next meeting, can he be seated as a council member? We'll have him as. Yeah, he can come yeah. up here and sit. He just can't vote yet. It's just as comfortable as the chair he's in. It's not a change, just a table. We'll have it at the first of the meeting, the swearing in part okay. at the first of the meeting. You can take a seat then. Okay. Yep. If you'd like to use the table to take notes, Ben, you're welcome to come up tonight. Okay. All right. Moving on. Budget discussion. Who's taking this? Uh, I, I just listed the guys in a, on the front cover. Mike, Mayor and then electric generation. Mike Phillips. Yeah. The pages are yeah. uh, marked beside there. So page Mike's, fifty-two to fifty-three. How do we decide, Corey? Just real quick. How do we decide who goes first? Because it's never in order by page number. I just start writing them down. Okay. Or you don't. There's some method to your madness, and we know yeah. it. I want Bauer to be last. <laughs> okay. I mean, he was the first one to show up tonight, so. Well, so next year he'll get to be first since okay. he showed up first. Yeah, there's no rhyme, no reason, Josiah, how I put him in there. Thank I just, you. I started typing, so. For the power plant 2025 budget, <clears throat> Most of the line items just carry straight across the numbers from 2024. There's two line items that didn't, I'm sure you've noticed. And that would be the diesel and oil purchase and the maintenance of generator equipment. We raised them to due to we're going to try to have the wort silos available 24-7, 365 days a year compared to seasonal operations. Now they'll be available year-round. Capital A outlay items. <coughs> We've uh, 
setting money aside for the construction of a <clears throat> basically an oil and antifreeze shack <clears throat> at power plant one the main plant and that will be due to hold the extra oil and antifreeze for the wurtzillas and the two units out there <clears throat> and with the install a new roof on power plant two that houses the cat generators at bassett and some more relay replacing in the wurtzillas equipment reserve funds we're setting money back to replace a one ton we've had since 1998 and capital improvement projects we're setting money aside for additional generation if needed any questions what would additional generation if needed they like, like an additional generator potentially yeah, they keep raising our capacity uh limits that we're required to have it was 12 then it's 15 now it's 16. if they keep at the rate they're going every year one or two we're eventually going to be where we're not flush in capacity and we'll be back to buying it again we're right now we're flush and we're selling it so it's we a have good a slot thing. for one yeah we do another diesel unit out at bassett room for one more if we need to out there but I think it'd be wise if we start socking some money back now because I got a feeling it's with the way the market's going, we're going to be looking at doing it. Yeah, man, we'll give you a little further background at our last SEG meeting. Uh, we got some information that indicates that we're probably going to need to do this. You know, we, we hadn't initially planned on doing something like this, but I remember after the meeting, Mike immediately came down and said, yeah, we need to start putting some money back because it's gone up. I've been here three years. It's gone up twice in my time here. So the, the, the trend is going up. So. The percentage was 12, and the winter is years even ago, scarier. To now it's 15, to now it's next year's 16, and they're going to make this have a capacity of 45 or 46 in the winter right. Ow. of our peak. We do got some hydro we can pull back. We can get a megawatt of capacity off that if we need to, but I really do feel that we probably ought to start thinking sooner than later about this particular project. What would you say for another Wurzella? No, probably for just quick capacity and just to have it on the books, we'd be probably smart just to throw a diesel in and hope to just only use it a few times a year. And, you know, it could generate us, what? Megs? Yeah, two megs, and that'd gain us about $108,000 a year in capacity credits. This would pay for itself in two and a half years, three years, possibly. So, I mean, it's, it, honestly, it's probably a good investment, but <laughs> for us to sit there and let it run twice yeah. a year in testing, basically, is all we're going to do. So, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. And Baker. <laughs> like Mike said, uh, the carryover from the 24 to 25, um, I did have to raise a little bit on the equipment expense, small equipment and vehicle maintenance, and it's mainly because of price of material. Transformers have went outrageous and the vehicle maintenance is like our bucket trucks if we have a major problem with their hoses and leaks like that we pretty well got to have Altec do it because it's certified um, our equipment reserve um, you guys have already allowed us to order the big bucket truck that money's already sitting there Roxanne knows where it's at it's just we might we might get it somewhere at the end of 25 and then I'd like to replace unit 28, which is just a half ton pickup. It's a 2009, about 100,000 miles on it. And we ordered that bucket truck, what, last year? Yeah. In 23? They said it'd That's be how like, long it's taken us to get yeah, that to get equipment. It. So it'd be end of 25, first of 26, hopefully 25. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Toby. Okay, if we're on the water side, uh, line items are all basically the same. I hardly changed anything. The one thing you'll notice is the tire, water tire maintenance program is going up because if you get the pay, if you get the capital outlay, we're going to redo uh, college water tire, refurbish, repaint, everything. It, and it'll go on the water tower maintenance. And then also while we're on capital outlay, I'm going to replace our CO2 system. We have the original one from 05, and the company's been out of business for 
years and we don't have any it's yeah it's time to do something with it i mean it's we need one we can get parts for one we can work on one we can so there's two systems because everything in the plants we've done that we got two of everything so we'll do one this year and see if we like it and everything it works and then we'll do the other one in 2026. question so. for you toby yes and i'm not saying this because i work there <laughs> um, but i know other cities do this and maybe it could be a partnership to help cut the cost for the city i don't want to speak for the two trustees who oh, are Oh, I would love to because I know what you're going to say. <laughs> hey, a big red devil I mean, on the side We of call it? it the College Tower. So yes, we do. There are several oh, cities gonna... with... Uh, How much would you be end. willing to donate tonight? Like I said, I'm not speaking <laughs> for them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. speaking for them. But yeah. 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 yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in. We're, we're going to ask. Okay. Uh, just right now, we don't know who to ask. Uh, but once we get... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, the chair's over there. <laughs> no, no we, we are going to ask. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I used to know Emporia and Ottawa have it, and yeah. others are doing it more and more that's right. Right. beneficial for both part partners. Yeah, well, and we wanted to, first parties. of all, we want to get the budget approved because right now it's not an approved project. Right. Yet. So we want to get the budget approved, get it in there, and then, well, we know one person on the board, and we have. I mean, we almost had, we, 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 yeah, here. we almost had a meeting here for the trustees. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and the plan plan would be to ask them, but that would be the last thing that would get done, right? Because they just do everything else. They need to got lead paint on that thing, yeah. So they got to do all that stuff, and putting some kind of maybe the the mascot, putting a mm -hmm. Allen Community College, some something like that. Yeah. But that that would yeah, we're gonna ask it, but okay. wanted to make sure we yeah. got it approved. Just trying to look out for the city. Yeah. And the tower will be white, like the one on Oak Street, so. Little anything you put on it would, yeah. I mean, any kind of logo would, would go. That's water. Anybody have any questions on water? <laughs> what now? Is the loan payment. Yes. You'll see is the final payment, and it's half. Uh, more than half of what it moves. And we just made the last full payment, what, last month or this month? Well, this month. So, yeah, so we got our new water tower is then, 25 years old. Yeah. <laughs> That's been a hot issue for a lot of years. Tell me about it. <laughs> I've lived it a lot of years. years. <laughs> I was living in Topeka then and heard about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's so good to see that coming to right. fruition. And on um, the wastewater side, the line items are all straight across, and there's really nothing until we start figuring out how we're going to pay for the ammonia removal of the project. So we're hoping that grant will help us, too. Yeah. We're putting a lot of weight on that grant. That's that's a, that's a whole nother submittal, though. So. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on that or anymore? All right, then. Ben, congratulations. I think we're good. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. Mitch Phillips, page 4345. What are some ones they're going to? Water, Mitch. Well, about like everybody else, it's a broken record. Material supplies and vehicle maintenance. And that was our biggest increase for the most part on water. We're planning on, we're setting money back to purchase a, definitely a new service truck and setting money back for the previous year, the following year for dump trucks, uh, dump truck in that department. And, but for the main part, main part, everything just went up because of supply cost and materials and just maintenance on our vehicles. Everything's just kind of following the trend. I don't. Can't explain nothing else about it really, other than that's just it. I really do appreciate. I want to say I do appreciate seeing a chart like this. The most of the guys have chart. those. Yeah. When they have more than a couple pieces of equipment, right. pretty much every department head's made that or utilizes that spreadsheet. But I like that it goes also back into the past of when we started saving for it. So honestly, I mean, we follow it, but just because it's earmarked to say like. A, it's earmarked for next year. If we think we can squeeze another right. year out of it, we'll slide it back because another piece of equipment might fall apart around you. So, it, I mean, it's kind of like shuffling mm -hmm. around a little bit, but we try to track it out and, and trend it how it looks like because you can kind of tell what piece, that piece of equipment is falling apart. It's at the service shop all the time. It's that general guideline for our savings account, essentially, for that equipment is what those spreadsheets are supposed to depict. Any questions on the water? This one's all on the wastewater. Page 55, 56. Uh, we're, 
want to set money back to get one more lift station installed and of course we want to do some sewer lining we got to do some sewer lining down here in the park for the lift station that we installed this year uh, that lift station on top of the hill up there by as you leave the park where the old train tracks were it's about 20 some foot deep and we're in the river gravel there and we we're just pumping the river right now it's all we're doing so we're going to incorporate that in with our lining project that we'll set back for next year so we'll have money and we'll definitely come down here and probably just line everything in the park i mean obviously we've been talking about a problem about the water down here now we realize that we had a camera in that main and seen it i mean this just flows in there so that's one of the main projects we want to do with our sewer lining and come down here and finish upgrading the park lift stations on that note i see the uh, airport sewer lines getting mm -hmm closer the last time i was in a meeting there was a discussion about routing it over to the lift at basola versus go across that private owner's land it's going back to it's now it's going back through private owner's land to the lagoons yeah and so no no sewer lift station no. rebuild or no uh -huh. cost to the city finishing that project yep that once we get this other one done in the park we're down about two that we really got to focus on. Of course, that one out there is going to be pretty pricey. It's a Asola. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Thanks, Mitch. Uh, Still got gas one more. distribution. Page 3841. Or the same. Uh, just mainly setting money back for equipment and uh, materials and supplies. All of our stuff's pretty, pretty simple, it's under the ground, you hide it. So I ain't got much to talk about. Main things, your yearly replacement there that yeah, the KCC I mean, says we have to do and the, we, we, we replace, do? we gotta replace so much every year. I mean, we really dumbed that number down just to, in case something bad happens that we can't get laid but we usually lay two to three times more than we tell the state of kansas we're going to lay every year we we go above and beyond what we tell the state we will do mitch was it the gas or was it the water that the state was trying to figure out who would replace what whether it be the homeowner or the city? that was the water that with the, the lead it, that, that was the lead services. issue Okay. State's done figured that out. Once I always broke up into 25% criteria in the zones for that we've done submitted to the state years and years to the state of Kansas on gas. And whenever one zone in Iola, like I say, it's broke up, I think, in seven zones. Whenever that zone meets 25% criteria, it don't matter. We're going to replace all of it from the meter to the house. I mean, it, we've done the state done clarified that for us way back in the past. But luckily when we go in and that's how we kind of pick where we lay a main if we see the numbers are increasing on the service side because you got to track the yard line too if we see they're starting to get close to that 25 percent criteria we'll run in there and replace this water main and it's, you get to duck them services off and you kind of start all over now as far as the yard lines when they go bad because that is your 25 percent criteria there's no getting out of that one we'll just have to either bite it off and do it All right. Any questions? I think that's it, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, page 6266. I'm gonna just I'm gonna point out before the guys leave. <laughs> there's a lot of knowledge in this room. That is the city of Viola right there. Absolutely. Every time these guys come here and talk to us, you just you reap that benefit of hearing the knowledge. A lot of years of service standing right there, and I really appreciate your guys' in-depth knowledge and dedication to your jobs to our community. I want to you echo guys that. Keep it running. I want to Good echo job. that and also the fact that you guys treat your department budgets as if they were your own home budgets. And I appreciate that, that you look to stretch things out and are very mindful on how you are taking care of the city's money. And, and I'll echo that going back when I was first setting here almost 10 years ago now that you're very mindful of other people's money and only raise it you look really hard at the budget to make cuts where you can and only raise it if we have to and a lot of the raises if you've heard the main theme is it's not because we're asking for more but just 
in general the products have gone up and it's harder to get it's it's cost and demand so that's where a lot of our budgets increases are so appreciate everything guys i think we've got a no su retiring. superb city <laughs> tell them that no. 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 Kim, most of them have been working here longer than they've been alive okay now so okay keep it up on, that. on that note since we've and it's a we, good thing we appreciate it <laughs> on that note since we've heightened your egos can't you stay for jason's presentation yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of your gym <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, sorry, Jason. I tried to get you an audience. <laughs> uh, so they abandoned you there. Sorry. I'm used to it. I'm always last, Corey. Though. So hey, hey I'll he put you on next top year, next year. He said next year it's on the recording. It'll be in the minutes. You're good. I heard that, so I'm gonna keep him to it. <laughs> Thank um, you. Unlike them, I don't have the machinery. So, uh, like, we basically have two trucks a dragger um, we use the parks department's uh, machinery to help us out so on the revenue on page 62 uh, really the only increases you'll see is recreation program fees and that's due to the youth track meet um, we uh, co uh, ran with the school and uh, we had 160 some participants and so it was a very good event for us um, it was a one-day event uh, it ran very smoothly for a first year event. It's something that we'll continue to do in the future as long as they want to partner with it. So I've already been told that we're going to continue to do it from the school. So we just budgeted for it. Um, and also in tournament sales, uh, we went up to 1600 because of the co-ed softball tournament that we hosted this year. Um, it was pretty well ran. We didn't have any problems. It's always a benefit when you do uh, adult sports that you don't have any problems, so. Honest, yes. Um, do you guys have any questions as far as the revenue side goes? And then, it, like, it's, let's see, the expenditures. If you want to skip to page, it'd be 66. I mean, if you have questions on the other pages, uh, feel free to ask. But we only raised uh, recreation program fees just to pretty much match up with the youth track meet, what we're going to put into it. So that way, it, I mean, it's just across the board, it's going to be a raise of about 2000 each way. So Not bad. What we're going to spend, we're going to get back. So we probably got a little bit more back. We had 16 sponsors that sponsored our youth track meet, so it really helped out with the uh, t-shirts and everything. We made sure every participant had a t-shirt. All the volunteers had a different colored t-shirt, so it was a really good event. Had a lot of positive feedback, so good. pretty much the community telling us that we were running it again. <laughs> so. And then good. we're just going to need to make some renovations to the pool. Uh, see, that's earmarked for 26. It's going to need a new roof. Probably need some TLC too. Um, but everything with aquatics is expensive, so uh, it always scares me. I mean, it's something we run for three to four months, and it's expensive. Question for you, Jason. Yeah. Just a speculation question. Um, if because we did decide with to go forward with the fifteen thousand, if we end up not doing what Mammoth proposes and we, we decide to build elsewhere, have you thought of what to repurpose the fields or do something different with the fields or I'd love to replace oh some of them fences are older than I am. Um, they need replaced. Um, the dugouts need to be made larger. Uh, like on field four, it probably needs new grass in the outfield, but that also has to do with our flooding issue. Um, I just didn't know if you looked at repurposing that area to be something oh, else. Oh, to be something else? Instead of baseball, if we choose to build baseball, like, we'll st again, we're still gonna, not as far as the rec goes, we're still going to need field two. Yeah. Like, okay. We'll still need it. If we do go to turf, then I'm going to have to come back to you guys and ask you guys to change the heat policy, because uh, the, the, the heat policy because we'd never use field two if we went by the temperature on the field because it'll be so hot. Um, I've checked with some other communities. We actually have five all-star teams that are gonna represent us. We do a community rec all-star team, or teams and tournaments. 
um, and different communities take turns hosting this and so next year we'll host part of the tournament but I've been asking them about their heat policy and like independence just got turf for their rec fields and they don't cancel games until 115 heat index and I think in my if I'm not mistaken, we talked to Mammoth a bit about the heat, and they've got different color of pellets that can affect, make it cooler playing than if it was a black pellet. Hot regardless. Yeah, that sure. Radi- that turf radiates heat. <laughs> yeah. But you bring up a good point on this whole um, proposal with Mammoth. Whether or not what Mammoth proposes, whether or not we approve that particular design and build if that fails it's time to look at our fields regardless they're in need of some TLC something has to be done it's time that we invest something in our youth and our baseball softball program they're 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 showing their age something for you guys to chew on like Chanute's twice our population but we have more kids involved in our baseball softball rec programs than they do I mean, they got 10,000 people. We're pushing 350 to 400 kids in our programs. Barely can afford to make two teams. Good news. So glad to hear that. Send a list of all the rec programs you put on throughout the year. Uh, I had asked for that earlier this year. I emailed it to our possible candidates today. So. I guess I don't have all your guys' emails, but yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah send it so, to, send me, to Matt, it. Corey. They can send it to us. Yeah, I know it is, but I don't have I'm them sorry. saved. And, you you best. I'm sorry. But yeah, So it's we're getting ready to interview for so. our rec assistant. Yeah. So we put together a sp- uh, little uh, program sheet that showed all the activities and what the responsibilities are for each program. So, I mean... It'll basically be for the assistant, but we can send the other one that we we hand out pamphlets to the schools, the local schools at the end of the summer, so everybody kind of has an idea of what's going on. Yeah. So, any other questions? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, keep this portion of the packet for the next meeting, guys. Which pals? Uh, all the budget stuff. Guys. Keep all of it because. Eventually, we'll vote on the overall package, but the rest of it will be presented at the next meeting. So we're now ready for council and administrator reports. So we'll start with Nick. Um, I I just want to say um, I I noticed that along North Kentucky, there's a a speed tester there. And that next time that we, we need to replace that, Let's get one that has like three digits instead of two, because like <laughs> every time I try it, it just caps out at nine nine. So, so I don't really know how fast it. I'm going. <laughs> so I, I just want to throw that you're out that, there. You're that we'll guy. Just, huh? That new one will have a license place officer. reader too. <laughs> <laughs> the new one's gonna have a sniper behind it, <laughs> shooting out tires. Oh goodness. Um, that's all that I have. <laughs> I have nothing. You have anything you want? We'll put you on the spot tonight. Okay. Sure. Uh, the only thing I have is it's like a broken record. Grass clippings. It is against city ordinance to let your grass clippings go into the street and gutters. Just coming to the meeting tonight, there were three three properties on my way that they were in the streets and gutters. Just a little reminder. Um, I've had some homeowners complain about they live in the 300 block of Oak Street, Corey. So the alley behind south. that, Kim. south, the alley behind that, all the water is not running down the alley, it's running into their yards and garages. The siding on the bottom of their garages is getting ruined. There's pounds and pounds of dirt to in the Laura garages. Lee. Oh, we've, yeah, we've talked about that in quite a bit. They don't want more gravel. They want it regraded. It's it's like a top. It, it, you can see where it's too high in the center. I think we looked at that. 300, yeah, and 400. Well, if you could tell me when Jason would want to address this so I can tell the homeowners, I'd appreciate it. I'm not sure there's a good way to address it. I mean, we can go cut the alley down. It's going to turn to mud. 
Well, it's not yeah. working the way it is now. I got pictures I can show you after the Well, meeting. I'm not saying that the water doesn't run off the alley. I'm just saying you cut it down, you're going to run out of rock. I mean, we can cut it down a long ways, but there's also Bell Telephone that's going to be probably that deep underneath that alley. Well, when it affects your buildings, I don't like that. <laughs> well, I, and I, I'm not saying that. I, I mean, we can go to look at it, and I'll visit with Jason tomorrow. Uh, but I, I remember going down there. I can't remember when it was. Was you here? Yeah. Okay. The alley's not very wide down there. Right. I drove down it, too. No, and it's it, not... The time we've been here, we, we've added rock. Uh, We'll, we'll try and find something. We can't guarantee it's going to be a great solution. And remember, there are utilities in there, and they, they have the right to be there. And, and so we, it's going to be a layered issue. Yeah, this isn't the first time we've talked about it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah I, I, don't know, I don't know that there's a great, great solution to it. It's maybe one of those we may have to pick the best of a bad solution. We might be able to go out there and grade a little bit out of it, but yeah. I don't think it's going to grade right. down as far as what, how to affect like that, this, those houses you know, at all. Of, Wow. Um, they can take a look at it and get back with us on that. Thank you. Yep. Joel. Uh, Boy, howdy, do I have a list that I haven't had for a while. Uh, first is that registration has opened for the annual Kansas uh, League of Kansas Municipalities meeting. Sorry, I couldn't get it right. Um, I put KLC and that's not right. Um, and so just pushing you all. I mean, I've attended the last two and it's been a good um, experience. One, to interact with other officials at other, in, uh, not institutions, but cities, um, but also just learning more about various aspects that uh, a lot of us, most of us are laymen when it comes to how the city operates. Um, and so just getting more information for that. It is in Wichita. Um, Last year was it was a we were in a great venue. It's the same venue again. I can't remember what it, which one it is, um, but also if we have any long-term employees that would could be recognized. I know last year there were some that, well, I think Jim would have qualified last year because last year is when he hit 40. We don't. We opted out of the league service awards. Okay. I don't know how many years ago. A number of years ago, and they just get them. Once they hit certain platforms in our policy, they get a, a monetary value versus a, a, a pin that or a watch from the league that mm -hmm. is honestly overpriced for what you get. So, uh, yeah. Okay, I just had a, I just had a question on that part for the long-term employees. Um, going back to sidewalks, Joel kind of sparked this in my mind. Um, so let's say the city is working within the easement that overlaps, I don't know if it would overlap, but let's say it overlaps with the sidewalk and the sidewalk has to be destroyed. Is that on the homeowner to replace? That's on the city. No, we if we tear it out, we replace we, it. Okay. Replace it. Um, also, paying attention to the news in other cities here within Kansas, there's been some that have had some huge water main breaks um, to the point that there was one town that had 10 within two days and they've created a map that let their citizens know like who's going to be with, without water, how long it's going to be. And so I just wanted, I know that they left, but I wanted to give props to our workers um, because we really haven't had that issue. And it seems to be a reoccurring issue. I had one because, last week. Yeah, it's like on we've had one. It's a pretty yeah, good size one. one. But, but it, it, we're not at the point that some others are. And um, right. I just really appreciate the work that our people do. Question about if we do any professional development for our departments outside. It is offered. Um, well, and I'll just be honest with you. It's kind of an issue I've had is we don't have a lot of people that want to do it. Okay. And it's uh, I've tried to cajole people to do it, um, but I'm not going to force anyone to do it. Uh, and I've just had a lot of people just don't want to do it. Uh, so. There Everybody has it in their budget if they want. Yeah, it's in their budget to do it. it. Um, it's just whether or not they utilize it. Yeah, I can. <coughs> electric. You know, we, yeah, we don't have we don't have a lot of guys that that go to conferences and go to workshops. I I think if anyone in the city, I probably go t to more than than anyone does. Water crew has to. Yeah, water, yeah, water, water crew crew's goes. Gone to the, the, um, the water plant has to, and then our well, electric fire linemen have their own yeah. requirements that they have to. Yeah, do. so many hours a year. Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, you know, your police does forty hours of training. The police does a lot internally. Right. Um, and I, I our linemen go out and we conferences. have them in classes at the league and or uh, KMU, not the league. Yeah. Adam McPherson. What if we, as their employer, just required it? 
I mean, peop, some people have to do it for their licensure, but for those who don't have a licensure, we could just say you need four hours of education per year. They do uh, get that I through. I don't want to be that heavy-handed about it, to be honest with you. And then also with the guys that have to keep their licenses renewed, I mean, that would qualify as professional development. Uh, but yeah, I've... I mean, our safety that, training yeah, that, that's is probably not a step the, I want to take. Yeah. Our safety training stuff is probably the closest thing to training that our guys go to a lot of times. Uh, there's some gas conferences that the gas guys go to annually. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to going to KMU or the LIG conferences and things like that, Rural Water District, I know that Toby, I think, sends guys out to that occasionally. Yeah, uh, right. Department's hard to miss one. And to piggyback off of Joel, uh, we did just have the 4th of July. Um, and I know that people aren't supposed to be lighting fireworks in the streets. However, when folks do do that and they also don't clean up after themselves and just leave their fireworks trash in front of their house, what what should folks do? Because I've had some concerned citizens reach out. Call Greg. Okay. I mean, if it's in their yard or the edge, if it's in the street, we'll probably clear the street. But if it's in their yard, yeah, it's a nuisance thing for Greg to deal with. Okay. That's the it. That's it for my list. I think. Thanks. Um, I know there was a lot on Facebook, and I took some calls from citizens that were very upset over the decision not to pick up limbs after this last storm. Um, so we're probably still going to get some calls and um, it's it's the widows and the widowers and the disabled that called and stated that it put them in a tough spot when we typically pick up after a storm and we didn't this time so just I know you're aware of it you've seen the Facebook post as well as I have and I think some of them one was in Max and Joe's district and talked that they were going to reach out to you so we may get some follow-up on that there's several survey flags up and down 54 starting at G and W is that something we're doing with the highway look or there's flags, that, on, no, flags not, on both sides. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Nothing I, we're I, doing. I've noticed them too, and it's not anything we're doing. There's, there's something. It's, uh, communications. It very well could be Kansas Fiber Network stuff, survey stuff. Nothing that is re regarding 54 Highway, unless it happened to be the piece that um, I think it was Trans Systems. They were designing a school crosswalk type upgrade and I, I, Kate, I was involved I don't, it was back when you were there Ben but I they kind of held off on that improvement because they were waiting to see where we went with 54 highway but yet there's still some improvement there so I, maybe it's that Steve but I saw the markers and if it's not around Oak Street then it's probably not that so um, my guess is it's fiber I network thought, yeah I think they start at the curve and go east I'll ask the guys in the morning because I'm sure they've got locates on some of that that we can tell who called to locate in at least. You have anything for us, Corey? Uh, the only thing I just wanted to remind you guys, uh, typically we don't have our meeting, uh, that last meeting in July here. Uh, the fair board doesn't have anything scheduled in this building that night, so we're going to be able to have our regular meeting here rather than the North Community Building. Uh, so the 22nd will be here. Okay. Thank you. Matt, anything for us? <laughs> Roxanne? The folding machine did arrive uh, a week ago Friday. We're still working out the bugs, but hopefully you Folds will. and stuffs. Does it stuff? It, it does everything. It stuffs it. Awesome. Yeah. It's a good deal. All right. It's huge. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for attending, and we need an adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Pull up your ladder, Nick. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, everyone.